Well, good morning, my lovelies, and welcome to an absolutely beautiful spring morning. We've got blue skies, the sun's out. Oh, there's a couple of collard doves there this morning. Good morning, collard doves. It is a little nippy though and we've got a bit of a breeze but on the whole lovelies it's a beautiful beautiful morning all the catkins are out you can just about to see all the catkins look it's just it's a gorgeous spring morning i love mornings like this oh dear makes you happy right then lovelies today i thought we'd do a bit of a book review i haven't done one of these for ages um and I thought it's about time that A, I started getting back into my reading and B, we started doing some book reviews. Okay, so this one I bought last year before Christmas and I fetched it from the works and it cost me a tenner. A tenner. Most I paid for a book. Um, and the book in question is called The Secret. Um... It's by a lady called Rhonda Bryan and when I looked into it, it had rave reviews. Even my sister said, you've got to read it our kid. It's got some brilliant reviews on it. It's also, it's also a film. I don't know whether the film came first or the film came after the book. I'm not sure, but there's a film about it, um, which I will come to in a bit. And there's a reason why. So basically, The Secret is a book based on beliefs of pseudo-scientific law. Boy, that's a big word for a Friday morning. The law of attraction, which claims that thought can change a person's life. And there's three steps to it. So by asking the universe what you want and basically what the book was saying that the universe works for you not against you it works for you and with you and whatever you want out of life you can have however you've got to follow these two simple rules when asking the universe or putting out your energy be able to see a little white blob there. That's a sun thrush. Well, they're all out this morning. Morning, sun thrush. So basically, what they were saying is, we as humans put our energy, which the universe feeds off and works with. So if you're putting out good energy, happy energy, lots of love and light and all that business, whatever you put out in that realm will come back to you. So if you're giving everybody hugs and kisses and lots of positive, positivity and you're feeling good yourself, those around you and the world around you will, will give that back to you. If you give out bad energy, you know, you're not happy, you don't treat people well, they're going to do exactly the same to you. You're not going to get any good energy back. You're going to get bad energy, bad vibes, and people aren't going to treat you well. That's the basic core of it. Right? So, oh, it's a very loud song for us this morning. I can't even see him. So what they're saying is that if, if you want to ask the universe for things, you've got to be positive about it at all times. You can't just decide, I want a new car. Let's be positive for a week and see if it happens. And then when, if it does happen, I'll go back to being grumpy. It doesn't work like that, apparently. So, it's asking, it's putting that intention out there. That I don't have a problem with. That, you know, it's putting the intention out there. That I don't have a problem with. Um, the good and the bad energy vibes I don't have a problem with. I get that, that's fine. Believing that what you've asked for 
will come and it's already arrived. So if you, I don't know, say you're going to ask for new house, for example, and you have one of those positive thought boards and you put pictures of houses up and things and stuff like that and you ask the universe and you say look the universe this is what I want out of life I want a new house I really want a new house and you have to act as though you are you've got your house that you're going to get the keys and you've got your house and that you'll be moving in and you'll be decorating your rooms and apparently that works that works for you to bring the energy in for you to get the new house and you need to be ready to receive it when it comes so you need to be you know high alert at all times to receive this new house of yours okay now the other thing is once you put your intention out once you've acted as though you have got the house and believing that you've got the house you need to be ready for it to come to you so you have to be ready for it to be there and receive it this new house of yours okay right that i get that's the bit i'm not having trouble with the bit i am having trouble with and the bit i was having trouble with this book was it's the way it was written um can i explain it without upsetting somebody Oh bugger it, let's just do it. There you go, come on then. The problem I was having with it was... To me, it sounded like... One of these selling cinema... Uh, sense, not cinemas. Seminars, that's the word I'm looking for. That you get. They were quite big back in the 80s and the early 90s for things like um, pyramid businesses and things like that. You know, if you put this in, you put this in, you will get this return. And it was all very glamorous and very buy, buy, buy and very sell, sell, sell. And the only person that was getting bloody rich out of it was the person that had thought the idea up in the first place. To me, that is how that book felt. It felt like it was a selling sense yeah you know what i mean for pyramid businesses or timeshare hotels or something like that it really didn't sit well with me there were certain parts of the book that i could get into that i could work with you know putting out the intentions you know checking your energies because you don't want to be living in a, a perpetual circle of bad energy all the time you want some good energy in your life that I could get with, but there were certain stories in this book that I was just a gog. I was sat on the bus reading it most nights and I was a gog. I mean, stories like there was a lady in there who had terminal brain cancer and she was told that it, it, would, it would kill her eventually. She, she'd read the book and she took on this, I haven't got cancer business, I'm healthy. I'm this, I'm that, I'm, I'm in, you know, I've got good vibes, I'm going to live my life like I don't have cancer. And she never had treatment for it. And when she was going back for checkups, the doctors were aghast because the, bright, the terminal brain cancer was receding and she'd had no treatment for it. And within six months, she was completely cured. And she put it all down to this book. And that's what triggered the, the warning signs with me because and I'm gonna say it and I might upset somebody but tough it was it sounded a little bit like the healing stories from the Bible you know what I mean oh it's a bloody miracle it, I, I just it just this book did just did not sit well with me and as I was reading it I found myself sitting there going yeah right of course that happened yeah, right, okay, of course that's going to happen. Yes, I believe in the universe. Yes, I believe that, you know, she does give us prompts and she gives us things that she knows we can deal with. Um, 
and if we're not taking any notice she'll come and give us a great big kick up the backside that I get and I also believe that what you give out you will get back in return tenfold but what I'm not liking is the fact that these people are telling you that this little book can cure cancer this little book can get you the job that you want this little book can get you the home that you want the family that you want the life that you want no I don't believe it I believe you have the life or you get the life that you want through hard work and pushing yourself to do things what I don't get is a book that tells you that the universe will give it you like that I don't believe that I believe you have to work for it you can ask her god yeah you can ask her but you've got to work for it and she'll give it to you when you're ready um, yes it's all right it's 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 only a little book it's a short read I think you could do the book in a day I mean it took me months to read it because I, I was just I'd read a bit I was too aghast by what was coming out of this book and put it down again but because I've started a book I have to finish a book I can't not I can't not read it not finish it would I read the magic probably because I've, I've read the secret so I will probably read the magic but I don't know as because I think I'm too skeptical on things like that Would I read it again? No. Would I give it to the pre-loved bookshelf at my local metaphysical shop? Yes, I would. <laughs> That's the rating for it. But yeah, no, I didn't didn't really enjoy it. And I think the reason why I didn't enjoy it was because some of the stuff I was reading there was a bit far-fetched. There's the word I'm looking for, too far-fetched. But there is a film about it um, and I haven't watched the film so I might actually watch the film this weekend and I might do a little review on that as well and see how we get on see if that's just as bad as the book but you never know so lovelies that's our little book on the secret our book review on the secret I'm currently reading a book called The Vessel it's a pagan um, fiction book my daughter's read it and said it was brilliant so i'm giving it a go so lovelies have a very blessed friday remember it's absolutely beautiful out here today so if you can get out come on out and enjoy the spring weather do look after yourselves lovelies and remember if you need help please reach out as always somebody there that will help you look after one another and if nothing else in this world love this please be kind because you don't know what that other person's going through that stood next to you and as always we're sending you on this beautiful spring morning much love and many blessings